Everyone's favorite can of worms, the Megalogolo, or better known as hunters, are the most alien species in the coveted empire. Extremely dangerous and tough, these creatures are unparalleled in combat due to their colossal size, deadly weapons, and heavy armor. In this Evolution of the Covenant video, we'll be taking a detailed look at the hunters and analyzing their varied anatomy, AI, and combat changes. I've already covered the elites, grunts, and brutes, so if you haven't seen those yet, I'll put links to those videos in the description down below. Also, if you want to see more Halo content, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any future videos. And with that out of the way, let's see what changes the hunters have seen throughout the years. With each Covenant species in Combat Evolved having a certain role on the battlefield, i.e. leadership, scouts, cannon fodder, it still left a spot open for a heavyweight fighter. That's where the Hunters come in. Hunters in Combat Evolved stand around 10 feet tall, or in their hunched combat position at 8 feet. They are encased in extremely durable shiny blue body armor, which covers the entirety of their head, upper body, and legs, but leaves their necks, abdomen, and lower back exposed. The armor features a total of six long spines located on the upper back and shoulders, as well as an integrated assault cannon on one arm and a large metal shield on the other. The assault cannon is colored a purple chrome and has two green highlights on the top of the gun. The weapon's ammunition, a radioactive incendiary gel, is stored in a drum-like compartment on the side of the cannon. The weapon has a rounded nozzle that fires green globs very similar in look and sound to those fired by the standard fuel rod gun. The shield is a dark gray color and is made from the same material that forms the hulls of Covenant warships. It is extremely resilient and can deflect fire from any non-explosive weapon. It also doubles as a powerful melee weapon in which the hunter uses as a sort of battering ram. Just behind the shield, three fingers can also be seen. When shot, a hunter's blood is a bright fluorescent orange color and appears to have a very thick, slimy texture. Their flesh also has a pulsating glowing effect. But there is a lot more to a hunter than just a tall alien with spines and a shield. A hunter is not a single organism, but rather a collective of small, orange, eel or worm-like creatures called Legolo. In order to form a hunter, dozens of individual let Golo bond with one another both physically and neurologically to form a single hive-minded community. The end result is the standard hunter. When a single hunter becomes too large, the colony will divide itself in half to create two independent let Golo colonies. These colonies will share an extremely close bond referred to only as being bond brothers. Hunters that have been split into Bond Brothers are recognized by the huge spines that rise from their shoulders, which means they are bonded to another hunter. Because of this, hunters are almost always encountered in pairs throughout the Halo series. And unlike the other Covenant foes you face in Combat Evolved, the hunters possess no visible rank. As they are deployed more like heavy equipment or weapon platforms rather than conventional troops, ranks simply don't apply to them. Even though the Hunters are the least encountered enemy you face in Combat Evolved, they still have a variety of AI behaviors and gameplay abilities to help aid them against the player. Hunters throughout the game will always be seen in pairs of two, never just one by itself. The majority of the time, Hunters will traverse the map with short, sideways shuffles, similar to how a crab walks. Some Hunters can be found asleep, if you will, despite being in their combat stance. The hunters will not notice if the player is nearby or even in front of them unless the player attacks them or makes noises near them, similar to the way sleeping grunts can also be awakened by noises. Hunters can think and work as an effective combat unit without ever using verbal communication. The only time a hunter makes any noise is when performing a melee attack or when dying. <laughs> They have an idle animation where they stand straight up, stretch their necks out, and move their feet around back and forth, all while their spines on their backs move and twitch. A hunter's shield will deflect all bullet and plasma weapons, as well as plasma grenades and even shots from a ghost. 
The hunter's assault cannon is so powerful that a single shot can flip a warthog. Unlike some of the later games, Combat Evolve hunters can also be killed with melee attacks. Gameplay-wise, hunters serve as heavy shock troops mainly defending highly crucial and important locations for the Covenant. Offensively, hunters can be quite challenging even on lower difficulties. Their assault cannons do the most damage out of any Covenant infantry weapon, fire relatively quick, and have crazy good range. Their melee attacks are powerful and will even knock back the player. Their armor and shields also excel at deflecting the player's shots of taking them head on while also making grenades not as useful. But unfortunately for these hunters, they have one fatal flaw that renders most of their advantages completely moot, the one-shot pistol kill. If the player shoots a hunter just one time in their exposed back or neck with a pistol or sniper rifle, it will kill them instantly. And with their easily predictable melee attacks, it's especially easy to get into a position to land that shot. Putting aside that exploit, while their weapons are powerful, their accuracy when using them isn't the greatest since the shots travel in an arc. The cannon also has a short charge and glows green before firing, giving the player a heads up and enough time to avoid their fire. They also have fewer melee maneuvers than in future games, and the movements they do have are somewhat slower. And lastly, they're highly vulnerable to vehicle collisions. A warthog can kill a hunter instantly with even the slightest nudge or tap due to the vehicle physics engine oddity of Combat Evolved, which is a great tactic against them if you want to preserve ammo. So what worked with Combat Evolved's hunters? What worked with the hunters in CE has to be their offensive attacks. Their assault cannons are the most powerful weapon in game and can kill the player relatively fast if they're not careful. Their melee attacks with their knockback effect can also disorient the player if hit at the same time. What didn't work, however, would have to be their horrible one-shot exploit. It completely takes what would be a threatening enemy and makes them a laughable joke. Coupled with a predictable melee attack, hunters are sometimes even easier to kill than a single grunt. Overall, the Combat Evolved Hunters make a great first impression in the series. While they can be exploited into becoming a non-threat, they still have some fun and unique behaviors while maintaining a great art design. They're definitely a standout in the series. With Halo 2 having an upgraded and more detailed version of CE's Covenant, the Hunters saw a huge upgrade in their overall design and gameplay. While maintaining the general shape and design of CE, the Halo 2 Hunters feature slight graphical and design choices with their look. They are now almost twice the size and height of the Combat Evolved Hunters and physically tower over the player. Their armor is now a greenish blue color with it being not as shiny as before. Their shield and assault cannon are now the same color as the rest of their armor, but with the metal parts on their cannons and the center of their shield faded and turning brown. Their cannons still retain the same lights and ammo drum canisters as CE, but now have a three-pronged design. The firing method has also been changed from shooting single large exploding plasma bolts to now firing a continuous energy beam. Halo 2 Hunters retain most of Combat Evolve's AI and gameplay abilities, but also introduce several new traits as well. Hunters will now react to the loss of their Bond brother. Once its partner is killed, the Hunter becomes much more aggressive and will berserk, charging and chasing the player only using melee attacks. Hunters now speak much more often, such as roaring when their partner is killed and making low rumbles when they're idle. They have a new animation when they spot an enemy where they spread their arms out and flex their back spines. They have another animation where they drop in their combat stance and will shake and vibrate violently. Next, with their gameplay abilities, when battling marines, usually one hunter will engage the marines in close combat, while the other will hang back and support with long-range fire. Their assault cannon as well as melee attacks can now blow away and knock over objects in movable cover, such as Covenant supply crates. It is now impossible to kill or even damage hunters with melee attacks. Their armor now completely deflects projectiles instead of merely reducing the damage taken from them. 
Plasma Grenades are now able to stick onto the Hunter's shield, instead of simply bouncing off like in CE. Speaking of Plasma Grenades, being hit by a Plasma Grenade does little damage to a Hunter, but will disorient it and cause it to spin around completely or stand still for a couple seconds, exposing its weak spot. I don't know if this was a glitch or gameplay deficit, so if you happen to know, leave me a comment down below. And lastly, they appear noticeably less frequent than in Combat Evolved, with only 8 pairs in total encountered throughout the campaign. Looking at their gameplay, the Halo 2 Hunters are considerably tougher and more dangerous than their CE brothers. Their durability has been increased, with them now being able to take more shots and grenades to their exposed sections before dying, and can now only be killed in a single shot from power weapons like a sniper rifle. With their armor now completely deflecting projectiles instead of merely reducing the damage taken from them, it essentially makes them invincible if you don't shoot their flesh, making pistols and automatic weapons ineffective. And with their armor making them immune to melee attacks as well, even something like the deadly energy sword is completely useless against them. Their attacks are also much more dangerous than CEs, with having better accuracy when wielding their assault cannons. Their melee attacks do more damage and are faster, with less delays between strikes. It makes taking them on in close quarters combat much more difficult. While all these things are a positive for the Halo 2 Hunters, that doesn't exclude them from having drawbacks. The one-shot in the back pistol exploit from CE is gone, but is now replaced with the plasma grenade stun. As said before, when a Hunter gets stuck with a plasma grenade, they will become stunned and even spin around giving a free opening for the player to shoot their exposed backs, and with them now being larger than before, it's a lot easier to stick them. And the other problem that plagues the Halo 2 Hunters would be their assault cannons. While being extremely dangerous and versatile, the weapon charges slower, doesn't fire as often, and has a much lower velocity making it easier to avoid. And because it's a continuous beam, and makes it possible to survive a hit on even Legendary by only being grazed by the beam for a small amount of time. So what worked with Halo 2's Hunters? What worked with the Hunters in Halo 2 has to be their improved size and gameplay. They can withstand a good amount of damage, are more aggressive, and can kill you a lot easier than before, actually making them enemies to be feared. What didn't work, however, was once again a cheap gimmick with this game's stun effect, diminishing their gameplay considerably. It doesn't matter how strong or dangerous a hunter is if you can just get them to turn around and expose themselves whenever you want. Overall, Halo 2 Hunters are a vast improvement over their predecessors. They're physically intimidating, have much better gameplay, and are responsible for one of the coolest moments in the entire series. They're a great chapter in the Hunter lineage. Once again, Halo 3's Hunters use the standard Hunter design seen in CE and Halo 2, but with more graphical improvements and a slightly altered design. Their armor is now a much darker blue, and has a slightly worn look, with numerous scorch marks across the shield and the paint smeared off the center. The design of the armor also has a sharper look to it, with the helmet featuring a raised crest in the front and curling upward into a point at the back of the head. This design also now comes with a new armor plating that offers protection and completely covers their previously exposed stomach areas. This armor is also much more interactive to damage, making it possible to remove portions of the hunter's back armor through combat. The look of their assault cannon has also seen a change, with it aesthetically very different than the one seen in Halo 2. Its design features a long dark metal body with two silver tubes on the side, and three claw-like hinges at the front of the weapon's firing port. The silver tubes and firing port also have light blue highlights. This variant does not contain the ammo drum like the previous assault cannons, but instead features six tubes on the top and side of the gun, which appear to house the green incendiary liquid. Next, the exposed sections of the hunter's flesh is much more defined and detailed, with the worms being fully visible when their back armor is destroyed. Their wormy flesh also has an animation, with it moving around in a wave-like motion all along their backs and necks. Their blood is also much more bright with fluorescent luminous properties to it. The Legolo worms can also be seen around the reactors aboard Scarabs, controlling and piloting the dangerous machines. Moving on to their AI abilities and gameplay, 
the Halo 3 Hunters are for all intents and purposes more advanced versions of the Halo 2 Hunters. They're larger, less bulky, and are even more durable, able to withstand multiple clips from standard weapons like the AR and BR, and even two rockets or sniper shots on legendary difficulty before falling. Frag and spike grenades are barely effective against them, requiring multiple sticks. Their AI is more intelligent, with them reacting, functioning, and working together much like an actual pair. They move simultaneously very often, such as attacking an enemy behind cover, or when coordinating their shots. They will instantaneously cut off the charge on their cannons if the player has taken cover, which allows them to reposition themselves for a better angle. They are also deadlier than in Halo 2, with their cannon beams moving a bit faster and inflicting more damage. Even their melee attacks are faster, having a wider range than before, and can now anticipate your dodges. But, these hunters do have a couple drawbacks. Halo 3 hunters are once again able to be hurt by melee attacks just like in CE. However, these hunters are far more vulnerable to hits, with it taking only a handful of blows before dying. They also seem to get stunned briefly with each hit, making it much easier to pull off than you would think. Plasma turrets are also very effective against them, making them stutter and recoil and causing them to be inaccurate with their shots. It also appears plasma grenades inflict a lot more damage to them compared to before, and can instantly kill a hunter if stuck on their back or necks on heroic or lower. So what worked with Halo 3's hunters? What worked with the hunters in Halo 3 has to once again be their strength and durability. Their attacks are even more damaging, and they can move slightly quicker than in Halo 2. The only drawback I can think of is possibly them being just a tad bit too easy to kill. With the ability to destroy their back armor now a possibility, it's much easier to create a bigger target to shoot at, so the hunter's health should be raised to compensate for this new ability. Overall, the Halo 3 Hunters are really fantastic. They have an almost perfect art design, improved gameplay, and introduce a fun new mechanic for the rest of the series. It's just a real shame we don't get to fight them more throughout the campaign. With Halo 3 ODST reusing almost every single model from Halo 3, the Hunters look and act exactly the same as before, with one exception. They now, for the first time, have a brand new rank. I introduce to you, the Gold Hunter. The Gold Hunter is a new, more dangerous version of the standard Hunter. Wearing golden colored armor and equipped with an assault cannon that fires a single explosive bolt, similar to the Hunter's weapon seen in Combat Evolved. Combating gold hunters with their modified cannons can be quite tricky. They fire in quick succession, their fuel rod shots travel faster than the standard beam, do more damage, and also have a massive splash radius. Fighting hunters in ODST is also harder, with the player running more slowly and not being able to jump as high while playing as an ODST, making dodging their shots in close quarters combat extremely dangerous. Overall, everything that applied to the Halo 3 hunters applies to the Hunters in ODST. They're a little bit more difficult to fight with the movement restrictions, but still retain their overall excellence with the Gold Hunter being my favorite in the series. Just like every other Covenant species in Halo Reach, the Hunters received a new redesign as well as a huge graphical overhaul. They are even larger than before and are much more textured. Their armor now has a thick, heavy metal look to it, with the helmet having a new rigid layered design and the shield appearing thicker. Forerunner symbols and emblems have been added to their shoulders, as well as two light green eyes on either side of their helmet. The armor and shield is colored a light gray with a faint greenish hue, and the spines on their back have a green illumination toward the bottom. The Legolo worms on their necks and back are much more defined, and are longer and thicker with a wet, slimy look to them. The worms also have a new animation, slithering through the hunter's back and neck. The assault cannon has also seen a new design, with the body and metal flaps being more wide and chunkier. The gel pods on the top of the cannon have brownish bits floating around inside, glow bright when charging up, and only feature five tubes on the gun instead of the previous six. The metal flaps also now extend and open every time the hunter charges its cannon. 
This assault cannon features a full return to the Halo CE era cannons and dispels single blobs of bright green fire. Moving on to their gameplay, Reach's hunters without a doubt are the most dangerous and durable hunters in all of the Bungie games and arguably the entire series. Their armor and health has seen an increased buff with them being capable of surviving multiple rockets, repeated plasma grenade sticks, and even Spartan laser hits. Their back armor is much more durable, making their weak point harder to expose. Hunters will also use their shields more effectively. They will raise their shield vertically when being attacked from the front, covering both their neck and midsection to protect themselves from incoming fire, making attacks on their back section the only viable option to kill them. And with their increased health, attacks on their exposed backs are less successful. When attacking, they will rarely aim directly at the player, but instead shoot at their feet, relying more on the splash damage than the actual projectile. Their cannon's blast radius is also increased, and the splash damage can even hurt the player when they're behind thin cover. Melee attacks by hunters are much faster and more powerful than before, with even near misses causing the player's screen to violently shake, making them much more difficult to engage in close quarters. So what worked with Halo Reach's hunters? What worked with the hunters in Halo Reach has to be their tankiness. They actually feel like heavy demolition units with their heavier armor and stronger guns and make you go, oh shit, when you encounter them. And with that, I don't really see any downside to the Reach Hunters. Some people might think they're too tough, but that's what I like about them. Overall, Reach's Hunters are definitely tough SOBs. While they're not my favorite Hunters, they still have a good art design, cool little details, and engaging gameplay. They make an excellent case for scariest hunters in the series. While the hunters in Combat Evolved the Anniversary take inspiration from the Reach models, they lack many of Reach's details and have changed other things entirely. The most notable change would have to be the size difference in the models due to the fact that Combat Evolved's hunters are roughly half the size of Reach's hunters. Because of this change, the CEA Hunter model has lost any form or semblance of a neck, making them look disproportionate and squattier than normal. They are also missing the eyes from Reach, as well as the animations of both the CE backspines twitching and Reach's flexing gun flaps. The assault cannon's flaps are also permanently stuck in their open position. Another change to the CE Hunter is the addition of the armor plate over their exposed stomach, but it's only cosmetic and offers no protection. Players can still score a kill with a pistol or sniper shot to the stomach. Overall, I'm not really a fan of the Combat Evolved Anniversary Hunters. The physical models don't quite line up with each other, and the look of this version's Hunter armor is not my favorite. I much prefer the original look of CE. Just like with CE Anniversary, Halo 2 Anniversary uses a slightly altered Halo Reach design. The changes include a more smooth-like look to their armor, bigger and brighter eyes, and more brightly glowing lights coming from their chest, shoulder, and tubes on their cannons. Their eyes and the lights on their armor and gun are also colored a more aquamarine green color instead of the pale green of Reach. Overall, I think the Halo 2 Anniversary Hunters look really cool with the altered Reach models lining up much better with Halo 2's Hunters than CE's. Even though I still prefer the look of the OG Halo 2 Hunters, these Hunters are good in my book. While every other Covenant race that appeared in Halo 4 saw a massive departure from their original designs, the Hunters remain the only species that maintain their overall look from before, with only moderate revisions. Their armor is a dark blue color and more rounded and smooth compared to previous iterations. The helmet is also rounded, with it only having two eyes total instead of the four seen in Reach. The feet, legs, upper arms, and lower spines now have openings in between the armor plates, revealing more of their orange flesh. The shield is smoother than before, but with a new shape and pattern entirely, similar to that of a turtle's shell. Small scratches and bullet holes can also be seen lining the shield. While visually their assault cannon is the same as Reach, its firing sound has now been changed to the Halo 4 fuel rod gun.
The cannon flaps also do not move when firing. A very rare, secret hunter can also be seen in Halo 4 Spartan Ops. I present to you, the Rainbow Hunter. These hunters are the fastest, toughest, and most bestest hunter ever fought. <laughs> Just kidding. In regards to their gameplay, the Halo 4 Hunters are essentially watered-down versions of the Reach Hunters. While still tough to kill, they're not as intelligent as before and are all around not as fun to fight compared to the other games. Overall, the Halo 4 Hunters are the least memorable hunter in the entire series. They have an average art design, no new AI or gameplay abilities, and are barely in the campaign. They're probably my least favorite hunter. The Hunters in Halo 5 are exactly the same visually as the one seen in Halo 4, with the exception of this white paint on the center of their shields, a wet slime-like substance that drips down from their necks, and two new armor colors that are introduced in Halo 5's Warzone Firefight. The colors include a magenta for the Remnant Hunters, and a white armor with purple highlights for the mythic bosses known as Swarm Lords. The Swarm Lords also feature pinkish Legolo worms instead of the usual orange. The bigger change, however, is their completely revamped AI and gameplay abilities. Let's start with the changes that were made involving their assault cannons. The Hunter's assault cannon is now equipped with two different modes of fire. The first mode is the standard one-shot explosive bolt that does large amounts of damage. The other firing mode shoots a unique burst of fast, thin projectiles that track the player, but does less damage. A hunter will use these two firing methods interchangeably, with the small projectiles attack used to target the player at long range, and the main explosive attack used in closer fights. The gel tubes on their assault cannons also emit small electrical sparks after every shot fired, and dispels a small green cloud of gas. Moving on, they now have gained a couple unique animations and abilities. You can now see the Legolo worms moving around outside of their armor, and then sliding and reforming into their armor set. They also have a new roaring animation, pounding on their chest animation, and physically swatting grenades with their shields. They've also gained an upgrade to their berserking behavior. Now, when one is killed, the remaining hunter will still go into their typical rage, but will now emit green electrical sparks around their body, move faster and more aggressively, and will fire its assault cannon standard attack twice in one volley. And finally, we get to their gameplay, which has seen the biggest transformation ever involving the Hunters. The Halo 5 Hunters are by far the most lethal iteration that we've ever seen. They're even more aggressive, almost impossible to sneak up on, and can withstand more shots than previous games. Explosive weapons are less effective, and with them now being able to swat away your grenades, it's that much harder to stick their armor. Their melee strikes are lightning fast and nearly impossible to dodge, making CQC and weapons like the shotgun useless. They are also incredibly accurate with their shots, and with them now having a long-ranged option and fast-moving projectile option, it's even harder now to combat them from afar. So what worked with the Halo 5 Hunters? What worked with the Hunters in Halo 5 is kind of a double-edged sword. On the one side, what worked has to be their ferocious attacks, strong armor, and unyielding aggression. The Hunters in this game are the closest thing we have to how they were portrayed in the books. However, on the other side, their attacks and aggressiveness are sometimes just a little too much. They're dialed all the way up to 11, when they probably should be maybe an 8 or 9, since we as the players still want to have fun when facing them. Overall, the Halo 5 Hunters are a foe to be reckoned with. They're lightning quick, highly aggressive, and will kill you in seconds if you're not careful. They're undoubtedly the deadliest hunter. And there you have it, a detailed look into the evolution of the Hunters in the Mainline series. While we haven't gotten an in-game look at the Infinite Hunters just yet, the encounter Joseph Staten described when facing them in that previous Infinite update has really got me excited. What's your favorite hunter? What Covenant species should I cover next? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe, like, and share. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.